As you know, I'm not a big cookie person, but I have a soft spot for oatmeal cookies. Of course, not just any oatmeal cookies. They have to be done just right, where the edges are crispy and the center is chewy. This holiday season, I decided to test a whole bunch of recipes and surprisingly, the one that turned out to be the best is also the easiest. No mixers, no food processors, and a very forgiving technique. Seriously, you don't need any baking skills to make these cookies. The idea came from Cooks Illustrated. The brilliance of this recipe lies in browning the butter for a flavor boost and adding some oil to make a cookie that stays chewy. Most recipes that I tried tasted hard and stale on the second day, but not these cookies. These were still delightfully chewy with a beautiful, almost toffee-like flavor. The original recipe called for raisins. I don't know why oatmeal raisin cookies are a thing. Personally, I feel that is a mistake. The texture of raisins is fantastic but they don't provide much acidity that this recipe desperately needs. That's why I like to use tart dry cherries. If you want the tart ones, look for packages that are explicit about it since there are different cherry varieties. Dry cranberries could work well too. As Chef John says, you are Bruno Albus of which dry fruit to use. Another thing I added was pecans. They balance the sweetness and add some crunch. But you're welcome to skip them. I like my cherries or whatever dry fruit I'm using in the cookie to feel plump. So I soak them in warm water for five minutes. This is a good opportunity to separate any that clumped up together. Drain the cherries and dry very well with paper towels, then set aside until you need them. Put 84 grams of unsalted butter into a small saucepan and set it over medium heat. When the butter gets close to melting, it might start to splatter and make your stove very messy, but you can completely prevent that from happening by whisking the butter. This releases the steam produced by the water in the butter. Your butter is only about 80% fat and 20% water. So if you release the steam, it doesn't erupt into messy explosions. Continue to cook the butter until it turns dark brown and looks like this. Proceed to the next step in the recipe immediately while the butter is hot. Put a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon into a large heat-proof bowl like metal or glass. Pour in the browned butter, making sure to scrape out all the delicious brown bits. Whisk to combine. This will make your cinnamon very fragrant. For this recipe, we are using both dark brown sugar and white sugar. The role of the white sugar is to give our cookies crispy edges, and the role of the brown sugar is to give our cookies chewy inside. Since the brown sugar is often lumpy, I like to mush them together with my fingers to break up the lumps. Dump the sugars into the bowl with the butter and add 84 grams of neutral oil, such as canola or grapeseed. The oil sounds like a strange ingredient in cookies, but that's what keeps them wonderfully chewy. Whisk to combine until your mixture looks like wet sand. At this stage, it won't look smooth, but you want all the sugar coated in butter. Add one egg and one yolk straight from the fridge. No need to bring them to room temperature. Though, if you're located in Europe and keep your eggs at room temperature, nothing terrible will happen if you don't chill your eggs. Whisk very thoroughly until the mixture is smooth. Add one teaspoon of vanilla extract and whisk to incorporate. Now let's make the dry ingredient mixture. Put 142 grams of unbleached all-purpose flour into a medium bowl. Add 4 grams of salt. Either weigh it on a high precision scale or use teaspoons. Add half a teaspoon of baking soda and whisk to combine. Baking soda helps the cookies spread and brown. Baking powder helps the cookies rise and makes them feel cakey. 
personally, I don't like it at all. That's why we're using soda. I like to put my dry ingredients through a sieve to avoid any lumps and reduce how much mixing I'll have to do later. But it's not a biggie. If you don't have a sifter, just dump them in. Mix with a spatula to almost combine. Don't overmix to avoid toughening the cookies. Add 250 grams of old-fashioned rolled oats. Don't use instant or quick cooking or extra thick old-fashioned or stone cut. If you want the right texture, it needs to be regular old-fashioned rolled oats. Add the cherries and pecans and mix to combine. Make sure the oats are completely coated with the batter. If you have time, cover the dough with plastic and let sit for 20 minutes to help the oats hydrate, though it's not absolutely necessary if you don't mind the oats on the firm side. While the dough is resting, preheat your oven to 375 degrees with the rack in the middle. Portion out the dough into 45 gram pieces and place on parchment covered baking sheets. This recipe produces about 20 cookies. One standard half sheet fits eight. I usually bake two half sheets, that's 16 cookies, and freeze the remaining five cookies in a Ziploc bag for future use. Roll the portions of dough into balls. Then gently press on them with your hand to flatten them. If you're freezing them, get them to this shape first. These cookies bake very quickly, so it's best to bake one baking sheet at a time for even results. Place the baking sheet in the middle of the oven for four minutes. Rotate it front to back and bake for an additional four to five minutes. The cookies are done when the edges are brown, but the center is still soft and pale. Let the cookies cool in the pan for five minutes and then move them with a spatula to a cooling rack. If you want to reuse this baking sheet, you have to wait for it to cool off completely. Don't put cookies on a hot baking sheet. Wait at least 20 minutes and enjoy. I feel that they are at their best during the first couple of hours while the center is chewy, but the outside is still very crisp. If you want to serve them over the next couple of days, cool completely and place in an airtight container. What's great about these cookies is that they don't taste stale the next day. They will be every bit as chewy. The only thing they'll lose is the outside crispness. But there is a solution to this problem. Don't bake them all at once. Bake them as needed. There is no need to defrost them. Put as many frozen portions of dough as you want to bake on a baking sheet and let them sit at room temperature while the oven is preheating, about 15 minutes. Bake your cookies as usual, but expect your baking time to be a couple of minutes longer. This way, you can have a fresh cookie anytime. A huge thanks to Cooks Illustrated for this wonderful cookie idea. Here are more very detailed culinary tutorials for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.